And here is Mongozo looking out my studio window. And you're seeing the banana trees here in the foreground. It's a very windy day today. It's sort of hazy. So you're not getting the extremely bright color, but you can see the shape of the mountain there. First of all, to start this little sample scene that we are doing here, I am going to just use my brush and I'm going to use a little bit more of that red oxide to do a sort of a rough outline of my painting. Now we're not doing a painting of a particular place, but I want to show you how I put in the sky, the mountain, the road, so that you have an idea of how those colors go down. And then we're going to talk about something called aerial perspective. So first of all, let's say we have this tall mountain in the background here. Probably it's Mongoso because that's the mountain that I look out at every day from my studio. And we're going to put some other ridges and mountains in between us and Mongoso. Perhaps in the foreground here, we're going to have a little cart road just uh, going off into the distance, going off over the hill. And we need a uh, something in the foreground to give it more space. So let's put a tree. Um, I think a banana tree, banana trees are ubiquitous, meaning that we see them everywhere. And um, I think I'll put a banana tree going up over the horizon here. Banana tree comes out from the middle and it has those beautiful leaves that are flat and curly and green and blue and purple. So I'm just giving the indication of where this banana tree is going to go and I think I'll even give it a stock of bananas we'll fill that in later but right now I just want you to see this is for what it is which is the major composition of our small painting so our outline drawing is dry now the red oxide here just gives us a guideline we're not going to fill in the colors like we do a coloring book but this just gives us a guideline as to the areas that we want to paint. So I'm going to use the biggest brush that will do the job. Biggest brush possible that I can use um, for every particular job. I'm going to not choke it up like I'm writing a essay, but I'm going to give the brush a lot of length so that it can easily come from the strength of my arm and my body. Now, when I start to paint a painting, I always go from the furthest reference point to the closest. So the furthest would be out here in this sky area. Now, the sky is not the same color all over. Careful observation of the sky would tell you that there are many colors in it because it reflects what's below it as well. So I am going to start with this yellow and white mixture on my brush. Now I've gotten a lot of yellow and a little, a lot of white and a little yellow and I haven't mixed them up into a cake batter on the palette. I've just dipped down and taken some and I am going to paint the sky. You see I'm not being too careful about that banana tree. This is acrylic paint so it's very forgiving and you can go over and over it without uh, causing it to suffer or to get uh, mixed and muddy too much. So there is my first application of paint and that is a yellowish whitish color that's close to the horizon, close to whatever is uh, bumping up against the sky. So white, a little bit of yellow, lots of paint. You notice when I was making the brushes, um, the strokes, I'm not painting a house. So I'm not going like this and then going like this to fill in every nook and cranny. I have lots of different movements because that's what the sky does. The sky is always moving if you look at it. So there we go. We'll let that dry and then we'll go on to the next step. <laughs> 